Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the gentleman's journey. Guys, in this one I'm so excited. I got out to the boot barn and got myself a set of six inch tobacco colored Thorough Good Mock Toes. Now guys, there's a couple firsts for me on these boots, so I can't wait to get into them. But guys, we're gonna talk about the build quality, the construction, the materials, what kind of size I think you should get, the cost, and then we're gonna take them out just like we do on the gentleman journey and take them on a little adventure. So guys, after that, we're gonna wrap it up with my initial thoughts on these boots. So I can't wait to get into it. Let's do that right now. Now friends, you're gonna wanna make sure and subscribe because if you haven't already checked out the gentleman's journey, we always do a one year review. So we just got these, they're brand new, but hang in there because if you wanna see how they last, how they perform over the years, so guys, first up, the first thing we notice about these boots is the color. So this is kind of the classic color. They have like a darker brown, but this is their tobacco. Now let me bring out my Thursday captains just to show you how different boot makers see colors differently. So this is a tobacco and this is a tobacco. Now it might just depend on what you're smoking by what color your tobacco is gonna be. But guys, that's just a little frame of reference for you. This is what they call the tobacco. Now this is an oil tan leather, and so you're gonna be just fine with the Cobbler's Choice Leather Cream. You got the Venetian Shoe Cream, maybe the Saphir Leather Greasy Cream. Guys, we talk all about conditioners and creams. Make sure and go check out the conditioner series. But this kind of leather will really take, like Big Four is a really good option for it. Guys, we cover that in great detail, but right out the gate, don't forget that these things come conditioned from the factory. So you really don't have to do anything, just run them. The only thing you could do if you wanted to would be like some Cobbler's Choice waterproof spray, maybe a different brand. You know, there's all these companies have that stuff. This is a good one. We've talked about these different products on the videos, but that's the only thing that they don't have from the factory is that waterproof protection layer. So guys are really easy to care for. Oil tan leather, you can't go wrong. You know, something I noticed about these right away that I haven't noticed from a pair of boots in a while is that they're incredibly supple. And now it feels kind of like a set of work gloves. You know, I have a really good set by Giver. Make sure and check out a video on that I did. Giver gloves are just awesome. I try to plug those anytime I can. But guys, this leather is really soft. Now, it is thinner than some leathers. It's gonna be a little bit thinner than my Iron Rangers. It's gonna be a little bit thinner than, you know, your Nicks and Whites and stuff like that. But that's something I noticed right out the gate was that it's super supple. Now guys, just with the boots and all this stuff that I'm talking about, you know, I always talk about having a nice horsehair brush, all this stuff. We have videos that cover all this. You can see I have some, again, Cobbler's Choice boot trees in here, all this stuff. I'm gonna have links to it, including the boots down in the description below. But let's get over here. I like to start at the top of the boot. So let's look down and see what we can see. Now, one of the first things that I notice when I look down and I'm wearing a boot is of course the laces and the eyelids. Now, this boot has three eyelids across the bottom and then three speed hooks and one more eyelet at the top. I don't see myself running that eyelet too much in the future. Uh, I have it laced up now just for presentation, but I am a little bit too lazy to go ahead and lace it through that top. So I'm probably not gonna use that one. Something I noticed just, you know, compared to these boots again, these Thursday boots will have five eyelets and then two speed hooks. Again, there's three and three and then one. And then I was looking at my Iron Rangers and they have four eyelets on the bottom and then a couple speed hooks, you know, just, it just felt different. So it laced different and I was something that I picked up on and that I noticed. The next thing is it has that classic work boot style lace. Now it's brown and yellow, and these guys have actually stayed really tight. I, I felt like they were kind of slick or something in the beginning, but as I've been wearing them, they lace up pretty tight and they don't come loose. Now, if you're struggling with your laces coming loose, a mate on Facebook or Instagram was talking about a gentleman who has his own website and he has all kinds of different knots that you can tie your laces in. I did get into that a bit, I haven't found that it's been a struggle with me. There's a lot of different lace companies out there. I see guys switching out their laces all the time. Right out the gate, these ones are fine. We might do a little series on that at some point talking about some of these different knots and stuff. Maybe we'll get up close with the camera and talk about that. But 
I haven't had to do that with these boots. Uh, they seem to hold just fine, but yeah, you could get fun with it. You could put leather laces and they have different colored ones and stuff like that. So I see a lot of guys doing that, but that's kind of what you see right off the top. Now, these boots do have double, triple, and single stitching wherever Thorough Good thought was appropriate. And I really didn't find any issues. There wasn't a section where I thought the stitching could have been, you know, triple stitch where it was single. I'm pretty happy with the stitching pattern across here. The thing that I guess I found I wasn't thrilled with is where they tied the little tail of the stitch off. They just kind of left it like almost a quarter of an inch at some spots. And it seems like most every single stitch, the end of it is just loose. So not a big deal for me. I'm going to take my cigarette lighter, you know, and just come along there and clean that up a little bit. And again, guys, this isn't like a bespoke boot. It's not from one of the boot makers up in the Pacific Northwest where it's custom and, and handmade. This is a boot, what I call you buy it off the shelf. Now guys, we still want to hold them to a certain standard. Obviously they boast USA right on the side. So we'd hope that there's a lot of pride and work ethic there, but I'm going to go ahead and give them a bit of a pass on there until we do that six month, one year review and see how the stitching holds up. If it's just that they don't clip the tail, then we'll just give them a pass on that one. Something I thought was neat because this isn't my first mock toe is that it is across the toe and up the vamp is kind of one piece. And then they, they kind of cut and slice a little bit of the top, I think just for looks. I don't know if that's for structure or to bend the leather a little bit, but they actually cut little slits across there, which kind of looks sharp. Let me know in the comments if you guys know anything more about that process. Uh, but again, I thought that was pretty slick. And then something that they do here is they have the gusseted tongue. Now guys go back and forth on this. When I was over at Nick's up in the Pacific Northwest, you do see a lot of guys want that. You don't want stuff getting, you know, sticks and stuff getting poked in there. I think there's a lot of different theories on why you want the gusseted tongue, but that's just something I noted right away on that was that it does have a gusseted tongue. They did go ahead and stitch on a piece of white leather here. I don't know if there's a bit of foam in there or if it's just leather bound up, but that gives it kind of an iconic look. I think you can notice a pair of thorough goods just by this over maybe a set of Red Wings or something. I don't know, but uh, coming across the back, they have this pull tab that's actually big enough for my finger. So guys, I have pretty big hands and I can at least get a finger in there. I've had a set of boots, you know, where it just seems like it's there for looks. I can't tell you how many cheap boots I've had where that just pulls loose. So there's nothing more irritating than trying to go for the pull tab and that breaking loose. So again, guys, that's something that we'll talk about in the one year review. Uh, you know, we'll see if all these things hold up, but it's stitched really well there and it's a good thick piece of leather. So I'm really happy with that. And it's actually part of the back of the boot. So I'm pretty excited about that. Now moving into the boot, the first thing you'll notice is that it's online. Now again, this isn't a comparison, but over to the Thursday boots, they do run a lining inside there, but Thorough Good states that that actually makes it more breathable. And I have found leather boots across the board to be very comfortable. I think it's a fear that you're wearing leather boots, you'll be in a hot place. Right now we are at Guadalupe State Park over in Texas. So we're kind of South Central Texas and guys, it is hot here, smoking hot. Luckily we have some cloud coverage, but you know, I think a common thing is that you're wearing boots, you're wearing leather and your feet are just gonna get burnt out. But that hasn't been the case for me, uh, not one bit. It's not something that I'm concerned with at this point, but again, I'm feeling that really supple leather, but you come down in and they have their own little liner. So this is again, something where if you're looking for a higher arch, you can get a liner that has that higher arch or something like that. Now we're gonna get into the midsole and the welt. And this is one of the first things that's new for me. So guys, this is a Goodyear welt. We talk about that a lot on the channel. Most of the boots that you guys wanna see is a boot that has a Goodyear welt. Now this is 360 degree welt. It's not a 270, meaning it goes all the way around. This is completely resolable. But the first for me is the storm welt. So you can see right here, 
it has a piece of leather that actually comes up the boot and that gives it a little bit of storm protection, water protection, and it's actually going to seal that a little bit better, protect the welt, and in theory, cause your boot to last longer. So I think that sometimes, depending on the boot, it makes it chunkier, it gives it a different look, a different aesthetic, so there's, I wouldn't argue a huge difference of durability between the storm welt and not. Maybe you guys have a completely different opinion, let me know in the comments, but I would say it's kind of an aesthetic thing, and depending on the boot, if you're going for a really slim look, guys don't want to see the storm wilt on there. It does change the profile. However, guys will get a boot that doesn't have it. They send it off to a boot maker, a cobbler, to resole it, and they'll tell them, you know, go ahead and put that storm wilt on there. So it changes the look, sometimes dramatically. I think Thoroughgood has pulled it off quite well on this boot. Uh, the only thing that's kind of confusing to me is that that's actually supposed to be a piece of leather and they used rubber. And of course, rubber can break down and degrade and it actually will wear out quicker than a leather one would. So they went with a rubber storm welt, but the rest of it is actually leather. Now, just like other boots, the midsole is gonna have poured leather and it's gonna have a bit of a fiberglass shank. Now guys, I actually was wearing my Iron Rangers when I went to the store to buy these. So, you know, it's not something where, again, we're doing a comparison video, but I did notice a huge difference. Part of that's the outsole, and we're going to get into that in a minute, but I do believe that because the steel shank inside the Iron Ranger doesn't let it flex as much, I was surprised at how much it could flex. So, it has a fiberglass shank, which, you know, maybe it'll help you out in the airport. I don't think I've ever had an issue trying to get through the airport, but it has the fiberglass shank and that poured cork bed that's going to mold to your foot. So I've been super impressed with these boots. They're really comfortable. Uh, I don't see any dramas there. This will be something that maybe we'll get into a bit deeper when we get into the one year review realm and stuff like that. But moving on, the second for me, the first and the second new things for me, that storm well and then this wedge outsole. So they have the max wedge and this is a proprietary outsole from Thoroughgood. And this is what all the tradies are looking for. This is what your carpenters, maybe you're doing concrete work, different types of construction. I think it's a re really good boot option for just a lot of guys. Maybe even a lot of guys are cleaning these up, taking their wife out on the town. It's just an interesting look. Now guys, if you're going from a tennis shoe to a boot, I would say this is a realm that you might even want to start in. You know, this does not have a high arch profile. So, if you're looking for that, you might need to add an insole to get that high arch. It's just not, it's, it's gonna feel a lot like a tennis shoe. So if you're trying to get into boots and you're not sure what you want and you're not you know, vibing with the arch, this is a good place to start. It's extremely comfortable. If you're on your feet all day, that's what this boot was designed for. So guys, a lot of companies are running this now and they have been for a while. Of course, one of the main competitors is gonna be Red Wing. I was looking at Red Wing and I'll probably end up getting one at some point, but I've done a ton of Red Wing on this channel and I don't want it to be completely a Red Wing channel. I wanted to throw throw good some love and just check them out. I think they have a really classic look and of course that little American flag there kind of did me in. I really like that little touch, but uh, I might be a little biased there. Of course, Thursday Boot Company has came out with the wedge sole. All the guys up in the Pacific Northwest, Nicks and Whites have one, so it's becoming more and more popular. I did see that they just threw that on the Iron Rangers. I talked about that in another video. I'm not sure if I can get behind that yet, but we'll see. Maybe running this for a while, I could see a world where you could throw one of these wedge soles on a set of Iron Rangers. So again, that's gonna be glued to the bottom, to the welt, and from what I know, they last for a long time. So we'll talk about that again at the one year review, see if it's peeling loose or not, but that's something that can be resold, cleaned up. You know, we're not gonna go into great detail, but you got the leather conditioner. There's a lot of good options. Uh, Cobbler's Choice and others, maybe some saddle soap to clean them, but I can't wait for these things to get dirty. You know, there's some people use that magic eraser or something to get that white back. I honestly, guys, I can't wait for these things to get dirty and muddy and just tear into them a bit. I just think it's kind of bright and clean and fresh and crisp and I'm not digging that. So 
Honestly, guys, this isn't something that I'm going to keep clean either. I have a couple boots that I really want to keep clean, and I have some brown Thursdays that I think I could still dress up pretty well and stuff like that. And I need to get a few more boots that are dressier, but this isn't going to be one of those boots that I keep dressy. It's just not. I think with a good set of pants, you know, you can wear these with Carhartts or jeans. Uh, I do see guys wearing the skinny jeans, but I think it can afford a little bit bigger leg there so you don't have to wear a skinny jean with it or something uh, of course you can cuff your pants and it looks really good like that but i think this adds for just you can grab a different set of pants from your closet and i think you have a pretty wide range in this so i'd love to know what you guys are what kind of pants you're wearing with these boots but i just think they afford kind of a bigger range now these boots are coming in around 260 dollars after tax i grabbed mine from the boot barn but guys i'll drop a link to the amazon you know if you buy them through that link amazon's just gonna know that i sent you there it's not gonna cost you a dime extra what it's gonna do is just give gentlemen's journey the ability to buy more boots and keep the channel pumping but let's move on to sizing a bit now guys i went with an 11d they actually had a few different size options. They have the wide, I think they have from five to 15. So you have your half sizes in between there and you can go wide on all those sizes. So I was pretty impressed because they carry a wide range. Now, if you have a narrow foot, you might have to go a half size down again because I think what they do is they don't necessarily change the length in that half size, but they'll change the width. So this is an 11, but I did, fit into a 10 and a half wide. So the length seemed to stay the same, but the width on that 10 and a half wide just didn't do it for me still, but the, the length was the same. So I don't know, I could have maybe shoved it in there and it would have worked, but I went with an 11D. If you check out my video up at Nick's, I was professionally measured and I came in at 11D. I'm a size 12 in tennis shoes, size 11 in these, size 11 in Red Wings, and an 11 and a half in Thursday Boot Company. Hopefully that helps just get you guys a little bit closer to what might fit for you. Again, they have a really good return policy so you can just send them back or if you make your way into a store, you can check them out. You might play with some of that half stuff and it might get you a little lost, but uh, I don't expect it to be something that you'd want to really have to break in extremely hard just because the leather's thin already and they're really supple so if you if you got a set and you're thinking man these aren't breaking in i i can only imagine that you got a size at least a half size too big so guys that's enough nerding out about these boots at some time you just got to put them to work so we're going to take these out we're going to hit up a little trail why not we're at the steak park and see what they have to offer here guys this is it is hot here so we're going to put these boots to work i've already been wearing them i'm going to be wearing them to work this week and stuff like that so it's going to be great fun make sure and hang out to the end because i'm going to give you my final thoughts on these boots all right friends so we are about to hit the trail i'm going to lace these up but guys i'm just waiting for that day that the hater comes on to gentleman's journey and tries to school me and let me know that these aren't hiking boots now guys, I get it, but here on this channel, you know, I talk about a lot of boots that need to be run and gun lifestyle that aren't just meant for one category. We talk a lot about work boots and tough boots. Guys, if you have a boot like this and it can't do a couple miles, even 10 miles on a trail, then chances are it's still not gonna be good for the warehouse, for the construction site or whatever. So guys, this sole is gonna handle well, hiking and whatnot. We're gonna take it out. Uh, it's not incredibly muddy, but even if it was, you know, this isn't going to be traipsing in a bunch of rocks and mud. So I think it's actually a really good option. You've seen different fishermen that kind of have a sole like this. So guys, we're going to hit the trails, you know, but I got some hiking boots in my mind. So hopefully we'll see if 2022 can't produce a couple hiking boots on this channel. I got a couple that I'm thinking about, but let me know in the comments if you have a hiking boot that you think I should check out. Maybe it'll just happen to be the same one that I have my eye on, so we'll see. But guys, let's get these laced up and we're gonna hit the trails. So again, we are over at Guadalupe River State Park. We got the map, guys. I'm a big fan of these paper maps. I usually take a picture on my phone of something like this or of you know, the little stand that they have the map of. But guys, we decided because this one has kind of a cool point of interest 
that we're gonna end up checking out the River Overlook Trail. Now this trail, they say, leads you to a cliff overlooking the river, providing picturesque views of the river and Bower unit across the valley. So it's just a 45 minute hike. It might take us like a half an hour or something if we have a good pace. I think it's gonna be fun. Make sure and hang out to the end because you're gonna see me talking about kind of my review of these boots thus far and what I really think about them. So let's get on the trail. bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time it's clear to see from up here the world seems small we can sit together it's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free. to tell you guys if this is the start of the thorough goods taking my feet my body to places just like this then these boots are okay by me i think me and these boots are going to have a really good relationship they're already carrying me up to this amazing cliffside kind of reminds me of the grand canyon and i had my red wing roughnecks over there so there must be something about mock toes and canyons but we're going to make our way down a couple more trails Hang on to the end, because I'm going to tell you just a little bit more about what I think about these boots thus far. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time Clear to see from up here, the world seems small. We can sit together, it's so beautiful. You and me, we meant to be in the great outdoors. Well, there it is, friends. I bet you didn't think you'd get that. I threw in a little bit of extra of the Guadalupe State Park here in Texas. Guys, I think it's worth checking out if you're in the area. I want to get into my thoughts of these boots. Now, I've been wearing them a little bit, but this was the first real big trial for them. But first I want to go into that giveaway. And so guys, what I want to do, because I really love this stuff, I want to give away some leather cleaner and some leather conditioner. So all you got to do to win is just make sure you subscribe to the channel and then drop me a comment. I'd love to know what you would use that on. So let me know what pair of boots you'd use that on. And one guy's going to get one and the other guy's going to get the other. So now guys, this boot here, again, there's a couple of firsts for me. There's that storm welt right there. That was a first, and then the Max Wedge sole. A lot of boot companies are running that now. This is my first experience with it. Guys, that's what brought me to it. I like the mock toe. I think it looks good, you know, for my figure and my body and stuff like that. 
but what I was really looking for was to give this wedge sole a try. Now just hiking out, again, make sure and hang back because this isn't something where I think I know exactly all about this boot off of a couple hours. We do one year reviews on this channel, so you gotta stick around and see kind of how things go. Now, I brought a lot of information to the table. Again, what you guys really wanna know about this boot, that's the build quality, the construction, the sizing. It's gonna get you into the boot. This boot already has a good name behind it. That's why I went with this. You know, like I said, we might end up in some Red Wing Moctos, we might end up in some of the other brands, uh, but right now I wanted to give Thoroughgood a go. I'm really impressed with their American made. I'm really impressed uh, with the design, the construction, the quality, the thickness of the leather, I think for the price point is okay by me. Uh, again, it felt like a glove. It really did not just like the fit, it fit like a glove like you hear, but it actually felt like glove material. Uh, I was really happy with how supple it was. Again, right out the gate, you can run it and there's not really that break-in period. Let me know in the comments if you guys have had a long break-in period, but researching this and wearing it, and I just don't think that it's the kind of boot that you should have an extremely hard break-in period with. Now, I really recommend this boot for a lot of guys. I actually recommend a boot just like this to my father-in-law. Guys, I really think this is a great boot if you're coming from a tennis shoe. And so he asked me what I thought he should get as far as I thought just boots in general. I think he meant more tennis shoe. But this is what I recommended because that wedge outsole, it really doesn't have a high arch. So again, if you need that, you're gonna have to put some, maybe some insoles in there. But if you're coming from a tennis shoe and you're not sure what kind of boot to get, I really think you ought to consider starting with a boot like this, just cause it fits and feels and walks kind of like a tennis shoe. It's extremely comfortable. So if you have any kind of foot problems or something like that, you might give this a go. Uh, I just think it's one of those boots that a guy ought to have in his rotation. I always talk about when you're cleaning and conditioning one pair of boots, have another pair. I don't care if it's an identical boot, you know? If you're a guy out working, if you're a working man and you work out in the field or you're in the oil field or you're in construction or something, tell me you don't go through some, some of these cheap boots in six months or something. So, you know, get yourself in a good set of boots. But even at that point, you know, why not? Because you know over a duration of five years or something, you're gonna go through a pair of boots. Well, why not stretch that out to 10 years by having two sets and then you can make sure you're cleaning and conditioning them regularly. So while you're running one, the other one could be back getting a rest. You know, I'm gonna put some boot trees in these. I talk about boot trees a lot on this channel. Uh, it's already gotten sweaty, so I'm gonna put some boot trees in there, but why not have one set of boots off just resting and running the other set? So guys, check back. We're gonna be doing a one year review. We just got through with a couple really awesome videos. We got a lot of stuff coming up on the channel. I'm always curious what kind of boots you think I should be reviewing next. I love to hear your comments. Maybe what's your go-to boot? What do you have on your feet right now while you're watching this video? Maybe you're kicked back on the couch and you have just your socks, you know? I don't know, but let me know what your daily driver is as far as boots. Guys, I really hope you'll consider subscribing, kind of joining this journey, you know, this journey towards becoming a better gentleman. Guys, if you're out there, make sure you're treating your wives and the ladies in your life with the utmost respect and love and care and kindness. That's gonna go a long ways. That's what we talk about here on The Gentleman's Journey. So until the next one, guys, God bless you. And hey, don't forget to give those boots some love from time to time. Bird on a tree I'm just sitting